Hey everybody, what's up? It's Nick here, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you guys how to process HDR images through Adobe Photoshop. So this is the example that we're going to use today. This is an image of a Sprite bottle that I took yesterday, and this is an HDR image. So for those of you guys that don't know what HDR is, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and it's the process of taking multiple photographs of the same subject at varying different exposures, and then combining them together to form a single image. So this that you can see right in front of you is actually five different pictures combined into one and you get this kind of effect where the bottle looks kind of unnaturalistic and it's very shiny and it pops out. And I really like the look that HDR gives off on uh, glass objects like you can see here. Just to give you a little bit of a comparison, this as you're seeing right now is the HDR picture and I took a picture a little bit earlier that wasn't HDR, this is just a singular image. As you notice, it looks nothing like the effect that we're getting here. And in order to achieve something like this, you need to take varying different exposures from all different spectrums of your meter. So you need to overexpose a couple, you need to underexpose a couple, and then you need to get your perfect exposures. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop CS6 to get the job done, but you can use any versions above that. And I believe you can use version 5.5, but from what I've been told from my photography professors, the HDR software in 5.5 isn't as good as CS6, but I myself have never tried it out. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to open up a folder right here that has five different images that are taken of the exact same thing. Of course, you're going to need to take them on a tripod or else this won't work at all. So as you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five different pictures of the exact same subject and they're exposed completely differently. So. If I go through, as you can see, this one right here, I would consider to be uh, one of the good exposures. I took this at ISO, five, ISO 100, 55 millimeters at f11 with a half a second exposure. And then the next one I took with a, a one fourth second exposure. This I took with a one eighth second exposure. And this I took with a one second exposure. And then one with a two second exposure just to, you know, just to really get the effect done. So what we're going to do now in order to combine them together is you can do this in either Lightroom or Bridge. So what you need to do is just select all of your pictures, all of the ones that you want to do. And if you're in Lightroom, you just right click on them, go to edit in and then go to merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. If you're doing this in Adobe Bridge because you don't have Lightroom, that option will be under the tools menu and there will be an option that says Photoshop and then you'll be able to go to the merge to HDR Pro option. But right now I'm going to right click, edit in and then merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. And what that's going to do is it's going to open Photoshop and it's going to combine the multiple images into one. And yeah. Yeah, open anyway. I guess I need to update my Lightroom. But this process will take quite a long time to combine them together because it's taking all of these high resolution images, combining them together into one and essentially extracting all the data from it. So it's going to take quite a long time and I'm going to cut it all out or speed it all up so that you guys don't have to sit here and just watch my picture process. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so now that that's done, once it's finally done processing the image, it'll bring up this window right here, which is the Merge to HDR Pro window. And this is the interface that will allow you to tweak the image and basically make your picture have the HDR effect. So as you notice, we have all five of the images that we used down here. And something I forgot to mention before is that you don't need to shoot five images. You could shoot four or three or even like seven or ten. But it's all up to you. I just decided to use five. So you see right here, you have the images that you use to actually merge together and you can actually choose to just uh, deselect one so if you decide that you don't want one of these exposures in there you can just check it off and that won't affect your final image so over here as you notice we have a bunch of dials and sliders and all that kind of good stuff and up here what I normally like to do is I like to start with a preset and then once I have a preset base to work with then I start tweaking sliders and figure out what I want to do so as you notice you have all these different presets up here you can make it really flat for God knows how many reasons, or you can make it really high contrasty, like surrealistic high contrast. And typically what I like to do is go to a photorealistic high contrast and then work from there. But I think with this image, I actually used surrealistic high contrast for whatever reason. And so 
you can adjust the radius, you can adjust the strength of it, you can smooth out the edges and basically tweak all of these different sliders until you have an image that you're happy with and that you like. Now, typically what I like to do, and this is going to be important towards the rest of the video, is as you notice while I'm tweaking this, the background looks really crappy, but the foreground, like the bottle itself, actually looks really awesome. And typically what you do with HDR pictures is you double process the images in order to basically get the parts that you want out of it to look HDR and then don't worry about the rest of it. So with this particular image, I'm not worried about what the background looks like. I'm only worried about what the bottle looks like and we'll deal with the background later when we actually edit the final image in Photoshop. So you can tweak around, mess with all of these settings and basically get it to make the bottle look the way that it looks and then once that's done and you have everything the way that you like it you click OK. Now one thing that I should also mention is that if you're doing this with something that may have something moving around in the background that can cause kind of a ghosting effect because if you have someone if you're let's say you're taking a picture and you take your five images but in the background of one of them somebody runs quickly across the frame. Now in order to get rid of that you can just click this remove ghosts button up here and then that will do its best to process that out and remove the ghost as they call it. But once you're done editing the image, click OK and then it'll process it and give you the final image that looks in HDR. But for now, I'm just going to close out of that because I don't want to process another image because it's going to take me forever to tweak it and get it to the way that I want. So when you're finally done with everything, the final picture, let me just hide all of my layers here, will look like this. This is what the final HDR image looks like out of the Merge to HDR Pro window. So how did I get from that to my final image? Well, I'll show you. So I have this right here, which is called, uh, I just have it called layer zero, and that's the final version of the picture. And then down here, I have one of the original exposures that I took, which is just the original with no HDR done to it whatsoever. I grabbed it and put it in the document. Now what I did with that was I basically kept the background of this image, but I kept the foreground of this one. My computer is being very slow because I'm also recording. But yeah, basically what I did was I removed the background from this and kept the bottle and I used the background from this image. So if I just show you right now, I have another layer up here that has a layer mask on it. And if I just show that to you, this is what it looks like right now. It's just the bottle that I masked out, nothing more. And then if I just remove that layer, as you notice, the bottle is on the background of the original image. So I'm gonna give you guys just a little, just a little example and computer images. So this is what the image looks like with the HDR bottle. And then if I take the bottle off, this is the original. So this is the original. This is the one with the HDR, and that's the effect that I want to go and work with. So then after that, all I did was uh, add in all my adjustments. Like I added a levels adjustment that I, that I put a clipping mask on to only affect the background image and not the foreground. And then I put a levels adjustment that I had affect the entire thing. And then I added a black and white filter, of course. And then I put just a little border over top of it to you know darken the edges and make it look a little bit more moody. And then I also, what I like to do with these glass images is I like to go up to the filters and add in an oil paint filter and I did that onto the bottle which made it look like this and that's just my own little stylistic touch. But essentially that's how I got to where I am right now with this final image. That's how I combined those five images into one and then used them to make this bottle pop out of the image more. And that's essentially what working with HDR actually is. And that's all that I wanted to show you guys. So I hope you guys found this information useful, that you guys can use it to create some really awesome images. Now, be warned that HDR is a bit uh, finicky and it'll take a while to get an image that actually looks decent and you need to play with it and learn basically how it does. But I hope this gives you guys the information you need to go out and take some badass HDR pictures. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys whenever I actually decide to post another video. <laughs> see you later.